Ladies and gentlemen, from the famous Acme Comedy Theater in Hollywood, it's Acme Saturday Night. Starring Kimberly Huff, Richard Keith. Bill Kessler, Joseph Limbaugh, Jen Parker. Tony Rego and Jake West. Special guests Jessica Lovelace Chandler and Chris Crenwell. Musical guests James Lee Dallas. And our host tonight Thomas Calabro. Gentlemen, please welcome Thomas Calabro! Hi, thank you all very much for coming. I'm proud to say this is my second time here at the Acme Comedy Club, uh, theater, sorry, <laughs> club. Uh, um, the most exciting part about it, of course, is doing something entirely different than I've done all season on that. The 90s call, they want you back! <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so we have a heckler of my second time back. Uh, just so you know, sir, I'm actually on the show presently. I mean, I was on the classic in the 90s years ago, but I'm on the show right now. I got a diagnosis for you, Dr. Mancini. You suck! <laughs> And you know, that's what happens when you when you do uh, a show like Melrose Place. There's a lot of notoriety. You do a you do a, a character like Michael Mancini that's memorable. People mistake you for him, but I am not. I am not Michael Mancini. I'm Thomas Calabro. I'm like a dad of three. I'm a yogi. I'm a goofy, funny, trying to be guy. <laughs> See, so I'm nothing like my character. Oh yeah, because you both suck. <laughs> All right, that's really clever. Ah! <laughs> you know, I think I recognize you. No. Chad from Orange. Yes. How do you know? I am an answer. No. Doesn't really matter how I know. I know a lot of things. I also know your home phone number. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. From. I'd like to anonymously inform you that your husband has impregnated a young woman named Sarah Leonard, <laughs> who lives at 1132 North Cross Street in apartment 2 in Los Angeles, 90046. <laughs> oh, it's not important how I know. I didn't, I didn't impregnate anybody. I know. I did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but don't worry, they'll identify you as the father because they've swapped out the blood tests. You see, I play a doctor on TV, so I can get things like that done. <laughs> but still, it's my child, and I want to be raised properly. So I want to ask you a question, Mr. Frommer, and consider your answer very carefully. <laughs> Do you have life insurance? <laughs> yeah, I have like a million dollars of personal life health Oh, that is the wrong That's how Michael Mancini would handle that. <laughs> but I'm not him, so we're going to have a great show today. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Honey, uh, can you pass the corn? Oh, of course. How was school today, Todd? It was great. That's nice. Okay. You know what? I love you guys. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Gaga, how long have you been under our table? 
for about two hours, Mark. Yeah, well, you know, we've talked about this several times. Just because you're famous doesn't mean you can break into people's houses. I only break into your house. Why? We're not even your fans. Mark! Uh, how exactly did you get in? You left the key under the mat again, Susan. Oh, darn it. Lady Gaga, how do you get the lights to flicker? Great question, Todd. I rigged the circuit breaker. Oh. <laughs> she, didn't, she didn't be doing a show performing somewhere? Yes, but I heard you were having corn. <laughs> <laughs> I like corn. Yeah. How exactly did you hear about that? Todd told me. She came to my school and asked me what we were having for dinner. <laughs> you, you visited our son at school. I'm a free bitch, baby. Language. Swear! Mark, Todd, <laughs> Lady Gaga, please do not use that sort of language in front of our son. Sorry, Susan. Look, Lady Gaga, I know you have millions of fans, and so many of them would love to have you over for dinner. But you're having corn. I like corn. Lots of people have corn. But I like Susan's corn. It's garage damaged diamonds, amber fashion stuck in cob. What the heck does that even mean? It's gibberish. It's a line from my new song I wrote about Susan's corn. <laughs> Corn. Dad, Dad, can we give Lady Gaga some corn? I think she's hungry. No, 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 no. If we feed her, she'll just keep coming back. <laughs> Would you like to hear a clip from my new single? No. Sure. Yeah. I'll never talk again. Oh, boy, you left me speechless. Okay. You left me speechless. <laughs> Lady Gaga, stop humping our son. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mark. That was inappropriate. You know what? You need to get out right now. I'm going to call the police. Mark, may I have some corn? No. I think we should give her some. Susan, she's begging. Stop encouraging her. Dad. <laughs> All right, fine. <laughs> Lady Gaga, if I give you some corn, you promise you will leave? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Sorry for having intruded. I'll be leaving now. No, 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 hold on. Not under the table. You go out the door. My bad. Walk, walk, fashion, baby. Work it, move that bitch crazy. Hey! Uh, I know. Language. <laughs> <laughs> And now, here's the ghost of Johnny. I've got this big old maniacal pricker with no soul. Who is Jay Leno? Jerry 3000, super deluxe baby monitor guy. <laughs> Batteries not included. <laughs> that was a joke oh. right there. <laughs> Isn't it great? I heard that on Oprah. It's supposed to be unbelievably lifelike. Hey, watch your babies. That's what I do. <laughs> it's cool, although I really, I thought I ordered the 2900 series. Oh, yeah, you got a free upgrade. The Vinny Twine Man, 2900, had a drinking problem. What? What do you mean he had a drinking problem? I mean, he liked to drink and hit things. Uh, as it turns out, not the best guy to monitor the babies. Uh, apparently, sometimes babies are things. Oh my god! Uh, well, um, Jerry 3000, if you wouldn't mind go checking in on Junie, I think my husband and I are gonna have a little alone time. Oh, you got it! <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> um, Right, listen, uh, sweetie, uh, I don't know about this. I don't know if this is a good idea. I can see your baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to relax, 
okay? We haven't had any alone time in so long. Your baby is all asleep, like. <laughs> I know, it's just. It... Goo, goo, ga, ga. <laughs> baby sounds and whatnot. Okay, if he keeps talking like that, he's gonna wake the baby. Wah, wah, ee, ee, goo, wah. Uh, P.S., your baby's awake and such. See? Somebody has woken the baby. <laughs> you guys should keep it down in here. Oh. Okay, I'll, I'll check on him. All right. Okay, calm down. It's fine. I can't believe she paid for that. Your wife has entered the room vis a vis the door. <laughs> says your wife. Gurgle, gurgle, says the baby. Baby's fine. Okay, baby's just, fine. This is your weird. wife left about 10 seconds ago. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Thank you. Oh, I have to pee. What? <laughs> you or the baby? Oh, sorry, me. Okay, I see. Come on, just give him a shot, okay? I'm just really looking forward to having some alone time. Uh, never mind. I'm going to go out your window. What? A trickle, trickle goes my pee. Oh, come <laughs> on! Uh oh. All your neighbor is pissed and damp and not happy with my recent decision to eat asparagus. <laughs> okay. Listen, Jerry, Jerry, can you just. Come in here, I need to have a word with you. Come all right, on. all right, but hurry up now. It's not a good idea to leave a, ba a baby unmonitored, uh, especially with my pee window open. Okay. <laughs> Listen, uh, I just, I don't think that this is going to work out. I, what are you saying? You're, you're firing me? Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. You should have a baby model when you leave a pee window open. Oh. And now here's the ghost of Johnny. some passing interest in me, or at least feign one, for a few minutes. If it's unspoken, then why are you speaking it? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm taking back my beer. <laughs> this is my beer. No, it's not. You broke a social contract. <laughs> <laughs> so now that's your beer? Yes, I will prove it. Believe it. <laughs> oh, nice suit. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's nice. Um, can I buy you a drink? Sure. Yeah, why not? That'd be great. Um, Long Island iced tea. It's a, it's a pretty big drink. I guess we'll be here a while. You know, my boyfriend always teases me about girly drinks. <laughs> Kind of having a weird. 
weird night, you know? I mean, what is it with, with guys having to buy girls drinks, you know? I know, I mean, we're all feminists until someone offers to buy us a drink. <laughs> Thank you, we're finally, someone, you know what? For that, I wanna buy you, the lady will have your finest scotch on me, go ahead. Hey, sweetie. Hey, dude. Who's your, uh, who's your new friend, baby? <laughs> and that's mine. Ghost of Johnny. Responsible for the genocide of over six million. He pulled an entire continent into war, and he had only one ball. Who is Hitler? That, that would be Leno. I mean, he didn't kill any Jews. He killed comedy. James Lee Dallas. The song's called My Way. I saw you at the liquor store. You were looking so fine. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know you, baby. Had to make you mine. What's your name where you stay? You been crying, did he break your heart? Did he not know just how delicate you are? Your rise tell everything, you're feeling pain And all I can think of is making you smile again Cause you're beautiful, you deserve to be treated better mm -hmm. He left your feelings critical, you need care I see you with me forever, girl. The sun don't shine when the clouds are gray. And a flower can't bloom without the rain. A heart can't feel until it breaks in two. Cause Cupid threw you away. No two snowflakes are made the same. Your fire can't burn without a flame. So post those tears and put your face. And Cupid shooting you my way, my way, my way. And Cupid shooting you my way, my way, my way. I've never been in love before until I met you, baby. Mm -hmm. My life was so difficult. So damn complicated, you came, you changed everything and made it right. So many years have come and gone, but my love for you is still going strong. And I can't imagine what life would be if you were gone. The sun don't shine when the clouds are gray, and a flower can't bloom without the rain. A heart can't feel until it breaks in two Cause Cupid threw you away No two snowflakes are made the same Your fire can't burn without a flame So pose those tears that flood your face A fade and Cupid shooting you You got a heartbreaking situation just take some time, have a little patience You never know what lies ahead Beautiful girl, don't cry, it's part of life, embrace 
special. You're beautiful. You deserve to be treated better. Mm -hmm. He left your feelings critical. You need care. I see you with me forever, babe. The sun don't shine when the clouds are gray. And a flower can't bloom without the rain. A heart can't feel until it breaks in two. Cause Cupid threw you away. Snowflakes are made the same. Your fire can't burn without flame. Suppose those tears that flood your face so fade. And Cupid shooting you my way. My way. My way. Cupid shooting you my way, my way, my way. Thomas Hyde, everybody. What is on my mind, Facebook? <laughs> Excuse me, Father? Yes. Uh, I was wondering if I could give confession? No, actually, I was, I was um, all right, never mind, sit down. <laughs> Don't we go in the box? Well, they stopped doing that years ago, years ago. You haven't been to confession for a while, have you? No. No, that in and of itself is a sin. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I'm just. Go ahead. Bless me, Father, for I. Oh, so you know what? I'm a little short on time, so can you just move it along, get to the good stuff? <laughs> Should I get another priest? <laughs> no, I'm the only one here. Why? What's the matter? Am I not good enough for you? No, no. I. I, I Are you sure? You sure I'm not a suitable emissary for Jesus? <laughs> No, you just seem a little busy. Well, I am busy. I am busy. I got a lot of people. You think I got all the time in the world to listen to people's problems all day long? I've got other things to do. I've got to be at a wedding in 30 minutes. I'd like to get a bite to eat before then. <laughs> okay, sorry. I, uh, uh, bless me. For oh. I, sorry. Yes, uh, 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 it's been 12 years since... My last confession. Are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> I'm gonna have to sit through 12 years of sins? Is that it? Is that what you expect me to do? Oh boy, I guess I'm gonna miss my lunch now, thanks a lot. I'll come back later. No, 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 stay, stay. I wouldn't want you to go out there, get hit by a bus, and not have confessed all your sins, and go up to heaven, be with Jesus, and the little lamb, and all that good stuff. So just go ahead, go ahead. Okay, uh, I, uh, I, uh, I lied, I cheated. And finally, good, now we're moving along here, buddy, that's good. Hail Mary, blah, 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 okay? <laughs> Do me a favor, let's skip the small stuff, just get to the major stuff, okay? I committed adultery. Bingo, there you go, that's great, okay, you're a pervert. Is that the big problem, is that, are we done that? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm not a pervert. Aren't you supposed to be kind? You're a priest. Oh, kind. I'm not being kind. I see. I'm not being kind enough. Okay, giving up my time doesn't do it for you. Let me hold your hand for you, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me all your little sins, buddy. Come on, you can do it. I'm not comfortable with this. Well, how do you think I feel? I'm holding the hand of a pervert. <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't have to take this kind of abuse. Oh, sure. Give up when it doesn't go your way. Aren't you an old pro at that? Let's just ask your wife. What? What? Why are you being such a jerk? Oh, I wouldn't call me a jerk because that's insulting a priest and that's not going to help you get into heaven. <laughs> shut up! No, you shut up. You, you're the worst priest ever. You take that back. No! Take it back! No! Take it back! No! <laughs> Slap me? That's right, I did slap you when I liked it, and I'm gonna slap you again. <laughs> That's the other cheek. That's the other cheek. Just like in the Bible, correct. You're an asshole, buddy. Oh, I'm an You're asshole. You're 
You're a fucking asshole, buddy. I'm gonna, is there, is there a, someone in charge? God bless you. Eleventh commandment. Thou shalt not be a tool. <laughs> So, uh, how was your day? Oh, it was good. It was good. I mean, you know, kind of busy, but nothing out of the ordinary. Don't you, uh, want to ask me how my day was? Um, you're not going to get all, like, graphic and invasive, are you? No, no. Why can I know better by now? Okay. <laughs> Although, you know... Technically, when a doctor enters a female anatomy, it's not really invasive. <laughs> you know, you're not going into the systemic system. The uterus and the urethra, they're both dead-end spaces. Yeah. What? Yeah. Although, you should have seen this woman's uterus today. It was gorgeous. The most beautiful uterus. You know what? It reminded me of those caves we went to in New Mexico, remember? <laughs> oh, it was awesome. And her urethra, well, it's like... It was kind of like the detail on her urethra was like the writings in the cave walls. Writings? Like hieroglyphics? Exactly, yes. Yes, every woman has writings inside of her urethra and her uterus. It's kind of like, I don't know, it's, it, you know, it's specific to each woman. You know what I mean? It's, it's what makes my job so exciting and fascinating. Of course, this woman did have a problem. But I, yeah, I won't, I won't go into details. I won't, I won't go into details. Thank you. But I will say that the writing told me that a lot of hunters had been there before. <laughs> Sometimes I like to think of, of my job when I'm examining someone kind of like it's a game. You play games down there? No, I don't play games down there, but it's, it's kind of like I'm a detective who's in a cave looking for clues. Oh, what clues? What clues for what? Well, I don't... No, it's... but you know, never mind. I don't want to know. Okay. Well, it's, it's like I'm wearing one of those miner's hats with a light, and I'm spelunking, and I'm looking for the truth. What? Tr truth? Yeah, well, well, the truth in her, her case was that she's barren, but... Oh, jeez. Yeah. Okay, you know what? It just, it kind of fascinates me that you can think of all of that while you're in there examining a patient, and then <laughs> you remember it again while we're having dinner. Um, can we please talk about something else other than caves and truth and... Yeah. yeah. Sorry. You. Although, there was this other woman. She's 25, and uh, she's trying to have a family with okay. her husband. Oh, that, yeah. Okay, that's better. Thank you. Uh, you know, when the female's ready to get pregnant, the uh, fallopian tubes and the ovaries open up to the uterus, and uh, there's a space in between called the infundibulum. You know, and the egg uh, travels b b through that space, um, and then it gets deposited inside the ovary. Yeah, it's a, it's a miracle to me that it's able to cross that space. It's almost like it's got a GPS system or something. You know, it's like beep, turn left here. You know, the infundibulum is ahead two millimeters. <laughs> here, I'll draw you a picture. No, no, no. no, no. See, these are your tubes. It's like oh. this, and oh. here's your ovaries. There. Oh. Yeah. See, look at that. See, it's a dead end space. Oh, okay. Stop drawing my ovaries, and it's not a dead end space. Okay, please. Ugh. I'm sorry. Think of it like a cul-de-sac or a cavity. Okay, no more cul-de-sacs. No more cavities it. at the d dinner table, please. Okay, this is worse than the time you described the muscle anatomy of a chicken on our first date. I'm oh. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. But oh, there was this one woman who's so amazing. She had the strongest sphincter muscles. Oh, <laughs> it was like a Chinese finger puzzle. <laughs> Hey, you must be Larry, my new assistant. Yes, Dr. Mancini, the, uh, the agency sent me down. Really, so my last assistant left town suddenly for no unexplained, for no reason that I can think of. So, uh, Larry, I'll need someone skilled in adultery, extortion, and uh, blackmail. Someone who can file and handle all my money and guns. Well, I know the drill, uh, I know the drill, sir. Uh, I've, I've been through all this before. I know where everything is. Uh, before this, I, I worked in a 90210, uh, Cougar Town, and a Desperate Housewife's Drug. So. Very good, very good. Well, your first order of business will make sure you know where Jane is all day today. I plan on having a little fling with Kimberly here, and we don't want to be interrupted. 
Okay, sir, I'm going to check your wife's schedule right now. Checking, checking, and she's busy all day, sir, so you're good to go. All right, all right. that's great. Yeah. Let's go, baby. You got it. I love you, Michael. I love you, too, baby. <laughs> Michael! Oh, you cheating bastard. That's it. I'm leaving you. I better go, too. Kimberly. Kimberly, please. Dude. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> I checked the uh, I checked uh, the an outlook the uh, the calendar module. Yeah. Is, that, is that right? Is that correct? I don't know. That's why I have an assistant. All right. Oh, let me see. You know what? Yeah, it's uh, it's Microsoft Access. All right. Maybe this Access, is not going to work out. No, 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 I don't think this I, is going to work I can, out. Yeah, trust me, sir. I, I'll, I'll get the hang of it. I can handle it. I can okay. I really need you. I really need you here. Okay. So let's make sure we get it right. You got it. You got it. So let's um check on it, Doctor Mancini. I'm going to fire your ass. That's what you think, Dr. Levin. Larry, pull up the pictures of Dr. Levin with that hooker. Coming right up, sir. They, uh, they are on the X drive? Is that where they are? I don't know. That's why I, I have an assistant, so he knows where the crap is. <laughs> Searching uh, hooker plus blackmail search. Searching. 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 Uh, oh, here, here's a hooker. There you. we go. Oh, here's a dead hooker. There we go. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's... No, no, no. That's me with a dead hooker. I'm telling you, he's new. I will, I will, Try for a while plus will, diaper. I will drag that to personal. <laughs> and, and then I will search. Ferrari plus diaper. Ferrari plus diaper searching. Search. Ah, ha, ha. No. Uh, can, we, uh, can we email you later? Is that? Yeah, fine. I'm in the office all day. Okay, thank you. Catch you later. Yeah, I'll catch you later. Yep. <laughs> oh, Larry, this is just embarrassing now, okay, buddy? Come on now. This is the reason I got you. I think this, this oh, job you know is what? way too demanding yeah, for you. Yeah, e, e drive. It's uh, not, not B for blackmail, E for extortion. Just <laughs> lesson learned. Yeah. Can you just figure it out now? Yeah. Can we yeah. figure it out? Yeah. Michael, that's, that's it. I've had it. If I can't have you, no one can. Larry, can you get my gun for me? Okay, I will do a search. <laughs> uh, no, it's not on any drive, you moron. It's a physical gun. Get the gun. Okay, uh, let me see. Let me go through your files. Uh, so we got uh, fake IDs. Uh, we got uh, mustaches. Uh, we got cocaine. Um, <laughs> Little Mermaid soundtrack. Oh, please! Don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, like Ignore it. Can I buy this later? Please! Oh, okay, no, just get the gun! I'll take the back room. It's probably in the back room. I'll take the back room. Please do. I found a knife. Is that? Oh. Yikes. Um, I'm new. You mentioned that. Yeah. Uh, can you sign my time card? <laughs> From the Acme News World Headquarters in Hollywood, this is the Acme Saturday Night News with Dan Kane. Hello and welcome to the Acme News. That's a powerful theme, isn't it? <laughs> yes, from the World Headquarters right here in Hollywood, our top story tonight. We'll get there in a second. There it is. <laughs> our top story tonight. A new study finds that the most successful and respected news organizations don't broadcast from a small but wildly popular comedy theater in Hollywood. <laughs> it's 2010, and you know what time it is, so you know what that means. It's time for another exciting census. Yes, has it been 10 years already? All right, you can cheer for that. The census, yes! Let's get counted. The U.S. Census Bureau has been running ads to hire people to help with the counting of people. A spokesperson for the Bureau said people can apply for these jobs in just three easy steps. They then quickly released a correction saying it's actually four steps, or possibly five, maybe six, seven, maybe eight, but definitely no more than 10, 12, or 50. You know what the problem is, is that a lot of these steps are undocumented. <laughs> Not illegal, but undocumented. Voters in the great state of Massachusetts gave one final salute to their late Senator Ted Kennedy by electing a Republican to replace him. They also voted to replace the statue of Paul Revere with a huge inflatable Elvis and to replace the Old North Church with a Denny's. <laughs> One if by pancakes, two if by waffles. With the Massachusetts Senate election of a Republican, the health care debate has been thrown into chaos, turmoil, and personal attacks. 
to show us barbaric Americans, Americans how to properly debate as gentlemen are two members of British Parliament. Gentlemen. There they are. Welcome to the Acme News, fellas. <laughs> Now, since you are uh, classy and well-educated English folks, uh, please do show us ignorant, screaming Americans the proper way to debate issues on health care. Well, I believe health care is something that all gentlemen of all classes... I have a call! I have a call! I have a call! You have a call! I have a call! Pretty much the same thing as here, just add an English accent. British Parliament, everyone. Thank you. Well, the election of the new senator does change the math in the U.S. Senate a bit. Wait, no, it doesn't. They still can't put two and two together. <laughs> Meanwhile, Federal Reserve Chairman Ben Bernanke, who's facing a tough Senate confirmation process for a second term, defended himself saying he's too big to fail. As the nation observes the first anniversary of President Obama's election, there is concern about the future of his health care plan, economic plan, job creation plan, foreign policy plan, war plan, environmental plan, and the plan for planning. <laughs> Critics have complained that the president hasn't delivered on any of the changes he promised since he took office and the campaign ended. A startled Obama responded, the campaign ended? Uh, wait, that's, that's the part I was good at. Uh, a little help, Oprah? Anyone? And now, a new segment we call Anchors Away. We go to my co-anchor tonight, who joins us live from our Washington bureau, Richard Keith. Hi there, Dan. Hi, Rich. How are things in our nation's capital? Oh, no idea. I'm not in Washington, DC. Uh, I'm actually here in lovely Washington, Iowa. <laughs> oh, OK. Well, that, that explains perhaps why your news desk appears to be set up uh, outside on some sort of main street. Yeah, uh, as it turns out, there's no studio here, and none of the residents wanted to let me broadcast from their homes. Probably best for everyone. Okay, Rich, uh, what do you have for us tonight? Well, first up, Dan, this week John Edwards announced that he was the real father of Real Hunter's baby, although it doesn't take a genius to see the resemblance. <laughs> I think it's the hair. In an effort right. to boost his public image, this week John Edwards went to Haiti. In a related story from the future, Haiti is pregnant. <laughs> this week, the FDA has acknowledged that tanning beds may cause cancer. While scientists don't all agree they cause cancer, they do universally agree that tanning causes douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great show. According to a new survey, San Francisco is not the gayest place on Earth. According to the poll, the top three gayest places were Beaver, Vermont, Mansboro, Massachusetts, and of course, Pinkberry. <laughs> I don't think that's Pinkberry, but that's all right. I definitely don't want to get yogurt from there. <laughs> this week, Belgian doctors performed the first successful windpipe transplant, allowing a woman to speak for the first time in two decades. Said her husband, gee, thanks. <laughs> And finally tonight from Washington, Iowa, this week in Coachella, a male goat rammed its way into a strip club, said the club's owner, it must have been mesmerized by its reflection in the door, so it decided to come in. Which is weird, because that's exactly the same excuse I use. <laughs> well, Dan, that's all the news from here in lovely Washington, Iowa. Back to you in Hollywood. Thank you, Rich. Ladies and gentlemen, Rich Keith. <laughs> As the world continues to offer their support to Haiti, there has been an outpouring of well wishes from citizens everywhere, as people's thoughts and prayers are with those in need. With more on the reactions of local Californians is our reporter, Kimberly Huff. Kim. Hi, Dan. I'm out here in uh, Santa Monica today to get people's reaction on the Haiti earthquake. Uh, sir, could I talk to you? What was your reaction on the earthquake in Haiti? 
Well, it was kind of a rolling one, you know. It wasn't really that shaky, but it just kind of kept one of those rolling and rolling. I know it was pretty strong from the news reports, but, we, you know, we didn't really feel too much. I see. Uh, were, you, were you in Haiti at the time? I live in Tahunga. We didn't sustain any damage. I see. Uh, well, what is your take on the earthquake in Haiti? Oh, I feel sorry for all those people, but I'm just glad we're all okay. You know? I mean, it could have been a lot worse. I hardly felt anything at all. My wife did, though. Here, at your home in Tahunga. Yeah, we were home at the time. Hey, uh, when do you think Anderson Cooper is getting here? Um, a Anderson Cooper isn't coming, sir. He is in Haiti, where the earthquake actually happened. His loss. Lots of people affected here, too, you know. I mean, we could have been really hurt. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, Ma'am, excuse me, how about you? Can, can I ask you about the earthquake in Haiti? Uh, sure. You know, it's actually kind of weird because my husband said to me that morning, you know, I feel like there's going to be an earthquake today. And, sure enough. Wow. Uh, where was your husband at the time? Well, he was at work. He works at an office off of Sunset, and he said some stuff fell off the shelves. Really? Yeah. I didn't feel it, though. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on the people actually in Haiti? Yeah. It looks like they were hit pretty hard. I'm just grateful that my family survived it here. You know, we could use some really fresh water and medical supplies, though, right away. Sure, some granola bars. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, there you have it. Reporting from Santa Monica. Back to you. Thanks, Kim. That's fine work. Nothing like the selfless spirit of Los Angeles. In health news, millions of Americans are taking advantage of portable ultrasound scanning technology to have their arteries checked for blockages to help prevent strokes. Now, these things are really cool, and as you would expect, we have one here backstage. Uh, we have uh, uh, an actual scan here, I think you'll see that. This shows the uh, carotid arteries, I believe. And uh, Josh, do we have the results of my scan? <laughs> oh, wow. That's, uh, I wonder if I felt this a little tight in here. Why am I eating them with the wrapper on? <laughs> Actually, this is real technology. It could save your life. Go to strokedetectionplus.com uh, stroke to check it out. And finally tonight, Mattel is introducing a new product called Puppy Tweets, a plastic tag with sound and motion sensors that you attach to your dog's collar. According to the company, it automatically sends pre-programmed tweets based on the dog's activities. So if the dog is running around, yeah, can you imagine? Like there aren't enough tweets coming from humans. So if the dog is running around, you might get a tweet that says, I finally caught that, ta that tail I've been chasing. Oh, that's adorably ridiculous. But the product seems to have found its first high-profile customer who found that you can attach it to any collar. So if the dog is running around, it might tweet, I've finally caught that tail I've been chasing. That's it for the Acme News. That's it for the Acme News. I'm Dan Kane. Join us again next week. Oh, hello. I'm Jonathan Bennett, and I have never had trouble getting a date. But some people do. So today's generation turns to websites such as Match.com, eHarmony, and Facebook. But I'm here to tell you about something new and fresh. It's called Meeting in Real Life. Here's how it works. I saw her across the room. She walked right up to me. I walked right up to her. Yep. I asked her out. And I said yes. She said yes. I said yes. Sounds hard, doesn't it? Don't worry, it's not. All you have to do is step away from the computer, go outside, and meet people. Can I bring my laptop? <laughs> no. How will I be able to show her my six-pack abs? So can I touch myself? No. How, how can I tell her I'm only 24 years old? How do you express a smile without an emoticon? So, I'm not allowed to touch myself. <sighs> Nervous because I only rolled an 8 charisma. How will she know I'm from Espana? What if we're at the movies and she leaves to get up to go to the bathroom? Can I touch myself?
and then I'll stop when she comes back. Or I'll, I'll probably already be done. I suppose I could use a spell of enchantment. What don't you get? You, you just leave the house and you meet people. It's not complicated. I walked up to her and asked her out. I said yes. We went out. It was fun. We're still going out. Still. See, it's not that hard. I met a night elf at a pub once. Just put on your pants, maybe a clean shirt, and I don't know, walk around LA for a while. If we're out of, if I take her to a- No, you can't touch yourself. Who knows? You might beat the woman of your dreams. We, we met, met in real life. life. We, we met, met in real life. life. We met in real life. Meeting in real life. Stop trying to make it so fucking complicated. What if she's blind? Wait a second. 
second. Wait a second. <laughs> Vinny. What? We got a situation here. What? This douchebag here, he's calling me fat. No, what? I'm... You call my boy fat? Hey! Nobody I... does that to my boy! Oh, nobody! Listen to me. Listen, if you're gonna diss my boy, you're gonna have to suffer the consecration. Yeah. That's right! <laughs> there is no need for violence. There's always a need for violence. No. <laughs> if you... We're about to go Jerry Springer on your ass! Hey, I'm on the fight for call security. My... I'm sorry. Oh, you no. Guys, you whoa, guys whoa, 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 no, not security. Chill. Whoa. All right. Chill. Pause. You guys? have got to leave. What? What about the show? We don't get to be on the show? We don't get to be on your show? I want to be on your show. <laughs> we don't get to be on your show. That's right. Hey, Kitty. Hey, Kitty. Hey, this uh, new coffee is pretty rotten, isn't it? <laughs> hey, uh, Kitty, uh, is everything okay? Everything up? Anything up or anything? I'm, I'm sorry, Larry. I can't, I can't talk to you. I'm shunning you. <laughs> Why? We got a memo from corporate, and it said it might help with the transition. Pretty sure you're getting fired. You kidding me? You mean you got you got a, a message, a uh, memo from uh, corporate that said I was getting fired? No, that's just my interpretation. It, it just said to shun you. <laughs> okay, so they used the word shun in the memo. Yes, I shouldn't even be talking to you. I'm gonna start shunning you again now. <laughs> but I really want to be shunned. I mean. And, or fired, but I'm happy. I mean, oh, come on, don't shun me. I mean, this is kind of terrible. I mean, we're friends. I, hey. I feel horrible. Yeah. Hey. What's up? How's it going? Good to see you. I can see you. Good. Yeah. What's up? Um, nothing. Dan? No. How you doing, Dan? <laughs> Guess what? I'm being shunned here, and I. <laughs> No. <laughs> no, she said she got a memo from corporate. That can't be so. I, I heard the new coffee is terrible. Oh yeah, it's really bad. Who made that decision? Right. Wait, Dan. Wait, wait. You're not shunning. You're not shunning me too, buddy. You're like my best. Dan, you're, you're not shunning me. No, come on now, guys. Stop the shunning. What do you want? To, what do you want to do for for lunch? lunch? Come on. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Fun Ruckers? Whoa, 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 come on! Stop shunning me, guys! I feel terrible! This is awful! I'm getting fired and I'm being shunned? Sounds a little heavy. Yeah. I like the vertical line, but... I like that you can... Stop! I like it. I like the line... Come on! Come on beware of my existence! Beware of my existence! Beware of... No, I know. They're, it's good burgers, but I, I, yeah. almost, I feel like something a little lighter. It is kind of heavy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we can, we can, uh, I, I am touching her inappropriately now. I just, and I it doesn't even feel good. This is horrible. You could, come on. Come on. Please. We could get sushi. Come come on, there's, the, there's, that, there's the new sushi. I place. love sushi. I love sushi. I love sushi. Please take me. Take me with you. It's a plan. Hey, you know what? Please. Let's ask Frank if he wants to go. Sure, yeah. No problem. <laughs> All right. He'll be down. Yeah, I like that. Hey, Jim. Hey, Memo from corporate. Oh, thanks. Change of plans, Larry is staying, shun Dan. La Larry, uh, you want to go get some sushi or something? I love sushi. I love sushi. I want to go too to get some sushi, guys. Hey, do you hear something? No, I do not. Hey, <laughs> guys. <laughs> okay. I'm Thomas Calabro. This is my dream. I was on the set of Melrose Place, and the cast was all around me. Only it wasn't the current cast, it was the original cast. And they weren't humans, they were velociraptors. Raw. Suddenly they realized I was still human, and they started attacking me with their little forelegs. Fortunately, I had some katanas. Swish, swish, swish. Raw. Die, Velociraptor. 
After the battle, I saw that I was surrounded by people. It was the cast of 90210, but I couldn't tell if it was the current cast or the original, because they were all robots. Bloop. Bleep. I looked at my body and saw that I was a robot, too. Only not really a robot, because I had a human brain in a robot body, and my nose was human, too. But those were my only human parts, my nose and my brain. Like RoboCop, but with less human parts. Then all the robots gathered around, but the script was nothing but numbers with no words. And I realized that the name 90210 wasn't the name of the show, it was the year. Then I woke up. Thank you. Not yet. Please join me in welcoming back James Lee Dallas. <laughs> All right, this song is called Gravel Road. In the sky, Fourth of July, then bottle rockets fly right by. I wish I had a snapshot so I could reminisce with a smile. Those days are long gone, and I've done come a long way. It ain't no doubt about it, I'm a better man now that I played this game. I got my heart and my soul from my next to kin, and they all true, hard working, red blooded American. It's all we all are. You? It's obvious that one of us is drunk. <laughs> and I will not rest until I find the culprit. Tom, I feel like we solved the mystery. No, it's not okay, Sarah. <laughs> she has a nice party, and then someone gets drunk and shits on the pool table. <laughs> Well, they did. <laughs> Not cool, guys. Not cool. <laughs> Tom, I, I think we 
we all pretty much know who the drunk one is. Oh, really? Yeah. And what are you, a professional detective? <laughs> yes. Yeah, shut up. Listen. <laughs> What we gotta do is we gotta get to the bottom of this shizzle to figure out what's the dizzle. <laughs> right? Tom, please leave my house now. Well, not until we get to the bottom of who spilled the beans that you're pregnant. <gasps> Sarah, I didn't know you were pregnant. <laughs> Maybe not. Congratulations. <laughs> With your boss's baby. <gasps> How do you know that? I'm her boss. Oh. <laughs> You're just upset because I promised you a promotion and gave you a baby. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't explain how somebody here is a drunk asshole. <laughs> Tom, that would be you. You know what they say, you point one finger, you got four pointing back at you. So that means, that means you did it by a vote of four to one. <laughs> Yeah, she, she didn't do it, Tom. Yeah, well, somebody here is drunk, because check it out. Somebody at this party just a minute ago drunk dialed me. See? Look. That's your phone number. You drunk dialed yourself. Yeah? What are you? Expert phone number looker at her lady <laughs> numbers? Get the hell out of my house, you barfing, shitting, pregnant-making jizz hat! You're beautiful when I can't see you clearly. <laughs> out! Get out! <laughs> you want to make out? No? What about you, Plan B? Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I will leave. Boss? 